Um, would you guys agree with that? Yeah. Where it's one where if we take a look at each slide in, in kind of uh, greater detail. So that's what we're going to be doing um, most of this meeting. But per usual, let's start out with bucket fill, something good that's happening in your life. Um, anything positive? Well, let's start. I'll start. Thanks, Andy. Uh, last weekend we had our client event, our, our gumbo open, and we served over 100 bowls of gumbo. It was a blast. We had so many people there. It was super fun. And Heather, my, my son, who usually helps us serve, and my niece, both ended up having to work that day. So Heather came over and pitched in. <laughs> she worked so hard. So I'm That's super awesome. grateful for her, and I am grateful for all the people that came through. And I've got two referrals. Oh, good. good. So it was just like all around positive. Yeah. Good. 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 Who else? Chris. Uh, I, I'll uh, fill up uh, Rick's bucket because uh, you were in here the other day and I forgot what today. You had papers. You're all frantic. I was like, hey, can you give me some advice? And so. Why are you shuffling those papers? No, no. Literally, he's, like, he's like literally like walking talk. I was like, okay, yes, sir. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Um, and yeah, no, it's good. So yeah, good. Appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Well, all right. I it was my birthday a couple of days ago, and like, it, it, oh gosh, hear from so many people. Like we always talk about what a family environment we have in this office. Yeah. So many people, like beyond just like the Facebook page or whatever, like reach out to me through text or phone calls or whatever, and then I check my voicemail. <laughs> And I went and pressed play, and it was Maddie and Chris singing happy birthday to me on my voice. So we could just hear a little clip of that. No, 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 no. Never do that again. I woke up that morning and my teenage boys didn't even acknowledge. Like, they, they acted like it was any other day. And then, you know, to press that on the voicemail, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, because I, I call them my kids because they they could be my kids. Like, and I'm like, my kids at work acknowledge me. <laughs> my kids actually acknowledge me at work. <laughs> awesome. Super awesome. What else? What else is good? Um, I will bucket fill. I don't think Derek's on the call. He's going to be. Oh, not yet. He will be. But um, I can fill him for allowing me to do an open house and giving me some good. Information on the area and everything, and then also my mom, because right beforehand we went over some comparables and just was able to talk through, you know, the values and the different, because it's new builds, and so you're yeah. trying to compare everything and why is this house at this price versus whatever, and uh, it was super helpful because I had a, a group that came in, and I actually sat down and was able to essentially repeat the conversations that we had had and show them comparables. And, so good to provide that value. Rick. Well, bucket fill Rachel Ogren last weekend. Um, <laughs> Sherry was unavailable to do an open house with me. So Rachel came and we had over 70 people come through our listing in Richfield. <laughs> Ended up with 25 offers and she yeah. um <laughs> that was crazy. She born in July. Yeah. No, it was a little nuts. But she taught me how to uh, very nicely get everybody to sign in. So that was a good. Rachel, Rachel I learned a lot. To get everybody yeah. to sign in. It was awesome. After 24 years, it was very helpful. Oh, so what do you think of old dog new trick? What do you think of? I'm not telling. Not, no, I'm just <laughs> she, she had her little, her little cute little colorful clipboards and then this little, it's just a small sign in sheet, you know. And right when people would come in, she'd say something nice to them first and then just ask them right away, right away to sign in. And it obviously, I think it, it does help to be a nice young lady. And or just nice. Not just some yeah. <laughs> just nice in general. Yes. You know. it's forever. It was good. It was really good. So we, yeah, so we, so she followed up with a lot of people. To be fair, when you say that, what does the script look like? Because I think that's something a lot of people do have trouble with is having people sign in right so when you say she said something nice right like it's usually like hey um um hey welcome to our open house um come on in there's a lot of people here 
uh, and then and then without letting them just walk right by, you ask yeah. a question like, where are you guys coming from today? Where do you live now? That's probably and the, they just the, handed the like a individual. Well, then, well, then they then they say then they say something like, um, oh, we live right here in West Bloomington. Yeah. And, okay, you're gonna move east a little bit, and we're actually we have everybody signing in today. So if you wouldn't mind, just fill this out first, and then go ahead and take a look through the house. If you got any questions, let us know. Um, and so it's just matter of fact, like we're having everybody sign in, you know, and who's going to say no to it? It's not really an option. It's like, the, yeah. you know, I mean, the, yeah. The clipboard on that is a huge deal, right? Mm -hmm. Rachel emphasized that earlier because when you give someone a clipboard or something to sign, they're like, oh, of course, yeah. yeah, it's a clipboard. Yeah. Like they feel really important. <laughs> and it like really changes the vibe in a good way. Also, real quick bucket fill for Rachel. Thank you for having her at the open house. Yeah. I know she appreciated that. So yeah. I'm going to the place. Can we can we go back to the clipboard? When you go anywhere, we were just talking about this in the leadership meeting. When you go anywhere, the doctor, the yes. dentist, anywhere, what do they do? They're like, here's a clipboard of the same things I feel like I fill out every single time, but you have to fill it out every time. Are you like, you know what? I'm just not filling that out today. <laughs> like, no, you take the clipboard, you fill it out, and you give it to the nurse or whatever, right? Or the dentist, whatever it is, right? Um, you just you just sign it. And then I gotta show you. I gotta show you our new sign. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> it's, it's fun to say good things. I actually I love that it. when I saw that on social media because I was like, I wanted to know where you guys got it. I just made it. Okay. Often you know what? I it was I uh, one of the panels we had. If we want to bucket fill people who are bringing us value in our team meetings, it was one of the Tuesday Thursday trainings on. Open it house. was Brianna and uh, somebody from EW uh, Edina. Yep, that was they had one of these on a little. But theirs was like that, and I'm like, okay, those are expensive. Those <laughs> things are so So I just went on Canva, made it, and sent it to the UPS store to make for me and put on this and it wasn't cheap but it was okay and it's kind of fun and maddie used it in our open house last year but it's another way to get people to sign in and just make it look like it's you know easy right so i don't i, I love that, love that. that. question i always had on my sign out sign in sheet are you currently working with an agent yeah. and probably five out of ten ten times people lie like they say yes i'm working with like it's almost like when you walk into a clothing store and they're like, is there anything I can help you with? No, I'm just browsing. You're like, go away. I want to just, I want to look at clothing without you hovering, right? And then when you need a size or something, then you need the people to get to your dressing room, and right? But like, it seems like when people walk into open houses, they're like, I don't need your spiel. I have an agent, even if they don't have one. And you know, it's funny. I don't know what you guys use, but I know when I used to do open houses, I used to never ask them if they have an agent on that sheet. I would say, who's your current agent in a line, right? Because if they have no name for their current agent, they don't have one. And if they're like, oh, I forgot, I guarantee they don't have paperwork with that agent, right? Like if you just ask them, what's the name of your agent? And they're like, and if they're like, oh, I just don't want to share. Uh, that's weird. Um, it, like they just don't, they won't know the name. So it's not a yes or no. It's like, who is your agent? Current agent. Okay. Who is your current agent? I like that and if they have one, they will have that name in a second. If they don't, they won't have a name. Uh, one other quick note that can be helpful for that. I can't think of this yet. I've been meaning to do it. Someone who taught an open house class taught this. I wish I could give them credit. This is not my idea. They have a box in their open house sign in that says, Are you interested in off market properties? And it's just a box to check. Yeah, you it might have been. Yeah. You can, it's, on, it's on your sign. It is? Okay, cool. I can't remember. Can, oh, somebody can, That's actually on your sign. It got done. We're good. Um, yeah, that's a really good thing because that, that's, that's basically you saying in a very polite way, Do you want to sign up for my email list? And then you do it, you know? And then they can't be like, Yeah, I didn't sign up. You check the box. I don't know. The other, the other thing right. that, 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 that now it that, also gets people to actually put their real emails. Like I, I think Bethany mentioned they'll go back and cross out the fake email they wrote and write in a real one because they actually. We've all done this. I know, oh, do you, like, I have an email. Done it. So, yeah, I yeah. just write my fake email in a real email, but it's fake. Every like, drunk thing I put like the one. wrong email that I never checked. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I could have a million prizes in it. I do want to add to that now that there's actually a dessert in the room. <laughs> is that is that on that sign up sheet? They do not have a question as to whether you have a realtor or not, which I don't agree with. But that you know, so, but we do we do things a little different. And here's the option: 
So they have that because Rachel calls everybody and then asks them in the phone conversation if they have a realtor, mm -hmm. rather than them saying, yes, we do, we when they don't and lie. You know, so that's fine. I obviously am a little different. I don't want to go through the energy. So I'd rather rule out the people who are like, yeah, I don't want a realtor. So I'm going to make up a fake one or I have one. So yeah. I just set those aside and don't talk to them, you know, and I focus on the other ones. Yeah. But it's not a bad idea, especially if you're trying to pick up buyers and yeah. you don't have any problems making the phone calls and reaching out to people. So that's 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 in our next conversation. So. I'll tell you, there's a house, though, that Danielle and I sold that we we got the lead from an open house. They live in my neighborhood now, me and, and they literally put on their open house thing that they did not have an agent. And then they were scrambling. It was Kevin's listing. They were scrambling later that day to write an offer, and they used us to write an offer, and they didn't win, and then we ended up finding them an off-market house. But, like, they initially said, yeah, I have an agent. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Two more things that are good. Yeah, uh, we had a new member start on our team last week. His name is Devin. So shout out to Mr. Awesome. Eric for connecting us with him. Um, so he has kind of a two week on ramp with us and then he starts our 90 day launch program on next week, Monday. So super awesome. excited for him. He's been awesome. with us, making phone calls. Did you see a new face around us? Yeah, I, I haven't introduced myself to him yet, but on Monday, he was oh, calling yeah, people, yeah, yeah. and I was like, okay, all right, let's go. I don't know what your name is, but let's We're doing go. this thing. <laughs> I'd like to thank Brahma's team and Homer's team and Ryan Cole's team just for all the off-market opportunities that we're having and working together and everything for y'all. So thanks, everyone. Awesome. Did I miss anybody? Joanna and Danielle have been sticking with this first-time homebuyer clinic. You know, it's doing all the activities, it's been a slow ramp up, but they've been sticking it out. And just Danielle in general, focusing on the activities, doing the things, you know, so far it's only been a couple of months, but uh, doing the things we set out for our business plan to do. I love it's it. Just it. Yeah. I keep seeing all the marketing for it, which makes me, like you're marketing. You want to join, don't you? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just sign up. <laughs> all right, all right. See you guys, that was that was that was great. I'm really proud of you guys, by the way. All right, so annual awards, we miss some people. Um, everybody makes mistakes, so we're gonna take ownership of some of the things that we miss. Um, in regards to, you know, you go through different numbers and um all of a sudden you realize like, oh, well, we might have done something wrong. So there's a page two sometimes. There's a page two that um some people <laughs> we just didn't see. Um so that being said, there's always an apology uh, because Very it's sorry. a big deal uh, in regards to any kind of recognition. So the people that we did miss are on here. So Amy Jo, uh, we miss her. Uh, oh, you're pausing and playing a video. Uh, you have to go to the next slide. I know I'm trying. Oh. Oh. You know what I'm enjoying about this, Heather, is I'm using one of those technical difficulties on any slideshow. Yeah. It's like a video. That's not the right keyboard. Lydia, why are you not coming? Okay. <laughs> oh. Positive picture, and but thank you so much, Kristen. We, we apologize there. And one more. Unmute, <laughs> Sherba. We've missed this. We haven't been together for so long. Yeah, I know. Oh, he's coming. I was yeah. like, wait, Lydia, you got to come in here. <laughs> Go back and forth. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so I've had this award for way longer than I needed to. I feel like that's, that's not true. Meeting. So that's I promise true. I'm not happy. But over the past couple months, I have watched actually a group of people drop what they're doing, help anyone who needs help. They're extremely knowledgeable, they're extremely kind, extremely helpful. So I am passing this off to the Bethany Nelson group. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just felt super welcomed into this office since the get go. So thank you for everyone who welcomed us. And we learned from all of you as well. So our door is always open. And thank you for welcoming all of our new additions too. We hope to have many more over the next month. So. <laughs> Okay, you guys, this is really exciting. It might look funky up here for some reason. Um, this is going to be sent out to you. So I know that we get a lot of questions on how do you sign up for something? Where is the event right? What do we do for this? We've had so many emails. I'm not really sure. Well, guess what? This calendar is a clickable calendar. So any of those classes, you just go on there and you click and it goes right to the event right. So today when you get it in your email, you can sign up for all of the classes. Through this calendar. Yay. You guys, this is not great. This is great, right? I'm like, where's the event right for that? Um, so you can go on, and also this gives you kind of an overview of what of hey, these are the days that it is, so it's an actual visual. Um, but I get I I'd go sign up once you get this, just so it's in your calendar number one. And some of the places don't have as many seats um in person. Um, and most of them are in person and on Zoom. Any questions regarding that? Awesome. We have some really great trainings coming up, and there's some CED uh, options this month, too. All right, so let's jump into these slides. So uh, this is going to be interactive. This is not me just, like, squawking at you about these, the, these data points. This is about what you guys see. Um, obviously, this is over time. So we've done some annual, and we've done some monthly. So as you guys look at this, right, um, we, see the, we see the dips. And everyone's been asking, you know, is this the next bubble? Was this the bubble and is this going to be the downturn? When you look at this slide, what are you, what are you seeing here? It did go down in 2022, total home sales, but it hasn't been like as drastic as 07 was, um, which is good. Um, and I think it was kind of like a regular average for most of the time. And it's only really been two years where it's been above that average line or way above it. So we're not even coming down from that high of a high. So I don't know how hard we're going to like shoot down, you know, because there's less. Like well, force. I think this is really, really valid though right now yeah. because, okay, so think about these years, right? When everyone's like, oh my gosh, I was so busy. I'm like, I was so busy. I couldn't lead generate. You guys look at. 06, 05, like all that, those years, there were more home sales those years than there was in like the peak of what we just had. Did you guys know that? Like, did you actually know that? Because I feel like the feeling of what we had, which was incredible. And then you look back at the last time, you know, you had that many home sales or more. There was actually quite a few more sales. And there were fewer realtors. And there were fewer realtors at that time. But there was more inventory. There was more inventory, yeah. But, that, but I mean, part of that piece of it, like that's a great discussion point, is the inventory is what made you feel so busy with the buyers. And on that piece of it, like what's the leverage points that you can do so that you don't feel like you're running around with buyers? Leverage point or expectation set? What are your thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Number one, get listed, right? Yeah. Really train your buyers. Mm -hmm. Train your buyers. And there's, I mean, when you think about it, when we were thinking of this in the years, there wasn't that much of that. That was us, mm -hmm. right? Like that was us interpreting the market in a different way because it ends up on us, right? We're the educators. We're the, we are the ones that make the deals happen. Yes, media said something, you know, said a lot of things over those years, but like we were working, we were working hard and we were working harder than what we had to because we could, we could be setting expectations differently. Mm -hmm. And I think these are, this is really exciting information when people are like, oh my gosh, what's happening? The shift, oh, this is going to be horrible. Like this information is just going to essentially give you ammo on what the next few years are going to be, right? Like, this is just information allowing you to calm your nerves as well. 
Because I think there's, is there a panic? Is there a panic for some agents? Like, are you feeling a squeeze right now? I'm hoping that everyone's shaking their head because I know who, what, what deals are closing each month and we are down, like across the board. So there, there should be some sort of, maybe not panic, there should be a concern, right? If our pipeline's not big or we don't have pendings in the work. Can we, can we speak honestly on that? Awesome. All right, moving on from there. So when we think of monthly, yeah. Can you go back? Yeah. So one of the things I think is interesting, just looking at trends here, if you look at starting in 2010, there's four years of rise and then a little drop. And then there's four years of rise and a little drop in 18. And there's four years of rise and a little drop in 22. So if we're following, then there, you know, we should now from 2022, we should be on a four-year rise mm -hmm. and then potentially a drop if we follow the last 15 years. Well, it's the reset, right? Okay. And, and that's kind of what's okay. happening right now with interest rates and people being worn out. Like it's the reset. Everybody resets. You go, you go, you go, you go. And then it's almost like you need like a, a correction of some sort. Mm -hmm. Whatever words you want to use for that, right? I really like if you look at the year. Um, 06 and 08 compared to 21, 22, the drop really isn't as dramatic. No. So I, I think that's nice. Yeah. You know, it helps put it in perspective. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's been worse. Here's It's been worse. And here's the other part. These are the slides, and this is the information. Honestly, there's 50 slides that you're going to see today. And there's more in the plethora of, of, of family reunion. No, these are those 50 slides I feel like are reporters. Um, this could be the next 50 days of your social media, and it should be, right? Or at least the next 10 days or the next 30 days, you know, whatever it is, even if you do multiple slides in a row, but explain this, right? Because if you're feeling that as agents, the general public is like, Everything's going to hell in a handbasket. Interest rates are going up. I can't sell my house. Like, there is a real fear of, of lack of knowledge, right? So educate them with these slides. Like, this is your opportunity. If you're like, hey, I have no houses to actually put on social media, great. This is actually better than that. All right, next slide. Okay, so this just kind of shows... Um, which is interesting, right? Because I think this is why we feel what we feel, right? So if you go month over month, it's like, okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. And then all of a sudden it was like, Whoo! in regards to home sales. I mean, we felt that, right? Like, oh, yeah. That's the real feeling. So it's almost this section that's making you feel overall a feeling of long term. Right. And now what are we seeing again? I mean, Rick just said he had 70 showings with 25 offers. So that decline is part of that reset. Right. And then all of a sudden, is there going to be an upswing? It's going to be interesting what the next three, four months looks like. And it's going to be the time frame where if you're taking market share, you're going to keep market share because it's just going to keep going up from there. So if you're like, hey, I don't have it now, great. Like, dig in, make those phone calls, door knock, whatever you got to do. Because if you take it, you're probably not going to give it back. Thoughts on this? It's nice to see, like, <clears throat> instead of, like, big jumps from year to year, seeing this as, like, okay, a slower decline month over month, it puts it in perspective, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not like a huge dip. You're right. It's a slow, it's like a decline that. I mean, I think the market really slowed down last year, late spring, early summer. So around like, you know, May, June is when it really started to hit. And that, you know, shows that a lot. But it also makes me think like, oh, yeah, that's like seven months. That didn't just happen. That was a slow seven month adjustment. You know, that, that also means that all during that entire time of slow sales, slow purchases, right? That's when the buyers, especially first time home buyers were saying, you know, we, we can't no longer afford this because it was such a dramatic change in what their payments are going to be that we've got six months, seven or eight months of people not buying that. That's why we had all the activity on a 350 listing in Richfield is because all of those people didn't buy at the end of last year. Well, that's a, an awful lot of people who are entering the market right now. Yeah. And it's. It, 
I'd venture to say that it is not specific to price range either, because we're seeing, you know, just as an example, we've got a, a listing on Ringer Road that uh, is listed at a million two, and we had it on for six months last year. We had 12 showings in six months last year, and in the past two weeks, we've had seven showings, and it's now under contract. So, you know, at that price point. So, obviously, there's buyers there, too, who said... I don't really want to buy during this uncertainty of this rates just went through the roof and we don't know what's happening, but obviously there's a little bit more comfort now. So you just gave a great opportunity. Oops, sorry, go ahead, Brian. Uh, comfort. Buyers are comfortable with comfort. where rates are <laughs> yeah. Um you just had a great opportunity that was listed prior to looking up old listings from six months ago that didn't sell because of what Rick just said, is a huge opportunity, right? So if you're like, oh, I don't want to call expires. There's not a whole lot of expires right now, or they want to relist. Go back six months when all of this started. Like, look at when this started, right? Go back and look at what those expires are. Because those people got frustrated as sellers, and I guarantee you they blamed it on their agent, right? Like, you didn't do it, you overpriced, or, you know, whatever it was. It wasn't their agent's fault, most likely, but however, I would say, Capitalize on that. The expired script is really, really easy. You call them, you ask them what they think happened, what they think their agent did wrong. They get really mad and tell you, and then you tell them how good you are at the thing that they said their agent sucked at. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Yeah, I was just calling about you your house listed beforehand. Um, what happened? Was your like did was did your agent like mess anything up? Were there any problems you experienced? Oh my god, my agent was just the worst. His price, he doesn't know what he had and no idea what he was doing with pricing. The CMA was horrible. Oh, I'm so hard, sorry to hear that. I am actually an expert in CMAs, blah, 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 blah. It immediately <laughs> solves the problem for you. So it's the really, really easy script to use. Obviously, calling expires is a lot of getting nose in your nose over and over, but it is a very simple script and people feel really reassured, you know? So that's helpful. Um, Love yeah. it. All right, next slide. So home prices. Anyone shocked at this one, right? Because we thought, I mean, the, what was the big thing is uh, home prices are going to shoot down now. Right, like interest rates are going to go up. We aren't going to get what we what we need in the home. I mean, we're still up there. I would not say that's a huge shift in in price point or average sales price, right? And what does this say though? Like we are still above the trend line. So over time, it's not a bad thing if that would equal out or level out. Correct. Like, that's not a bad thing when people are like, oh, the prices are going down. Awesome. Let's talk about that. We've been above the trend line for three years now. This is why that's happening. And look at all the years prior to that. We had all of these sales and it was below that line. Right? Any thoughts on this one? We'll probably be going over it later, but the thing with this too is even if there's less inventory around, there's more like dollar values of home around since homes are worth more, which means realistically, as far as commission goes, even though there's a lot of agents, there's still so much money to go around, you know? Okay, so that's my like, favorite slide. Yeah, I know, I know. You just killed the person. No kidding. <laughs> I'm just so psyched. <laughs> All right, next slide. Hey, what do you think of that? <laughs> okay, so we were talking about lower units. I still think we need to and know that we need to focus on units. But what does this tell you? This is the third highest year since 99 in volume, right? What do we get paid on? Units or volume? Volume. So what is this actually allowing us to do as units are going down, this year is essentially your grace period, right? This is your grace period to still make the money that you need to make before prices go down and units go down at the same time, right? So unit unit or volume still up, units are going down at some point. That's going to equal up, right? Capitalize on it. I just had a conversation with Bethany. Not only was she capitalizing on this, she's like, you know what? I just raised my commission. What? Genius, right? So raise your commission now so that when that starts happening again, 
oh, you're right. You know what? Other agents are having, are reducing their commission. We're going to go from six and a half percent to six. How does that sound? It's a little bit more difficult to be like, yeah, they're reducing their commission. Okay, how about six to 5.98? Right? Like this is, this year is so much opportunity. So why did I ask earlier? I was like, do you feel a little, like, feel stressed? There's zero, I shouldn't say zero reason. There's reason. However, doing the work, putting the work in right now, there's opportunity. So much opportunity. Would you guys agree with that? Are these slides lying about that? Does it make you feel a little bit better? Because you guys are all staring at me like I have eight eyes. <laughs> Just three. Just three of them. I mean, I think this is incredible, right? Because I'm not going to lie, before going into family reunion, I was very nervous for a lot of agents thinking, hey, if everything is going to go down, this this could be this could be a changing point, right? Like. I'm realistic about that. And yeah, it can still be a changing point, but it's really your decision. Are you ready to work? Like, are you ready to lead generate? Are you ready to set appointments? This one I lead gen together in my office today. That was Monday. Yeah, that was Monday. Because can we be really honest? How many hours do we actually work? on generating business a week. Can we, can we like get really honest on that? My goal this week is to do eight hours. Cool. What, how much are we doing? How much have we been doing in the last six months? Hours per week generating new business. Like let, let's raise our hand. And like this is a safe place. How many? Colleen. I spend five hours a week in business networking. Okay. Okay. But I have not been good at my calls. Okay. I've been doing two hours a day from 10 to 12. Sometimes it's hard, like things will come up and we've been really working on trying to make sure that um, that time block is blocked. Okay. Anyone else that wants to share? First of all, I appreciate both of you sharing. Because what I just heard was five hours a week, right? Ten hours a week, essentially, mm -hmm. right? So if you were to go get a job, right? Because that's what agents are going to say is, I'm going to go get a job. That's going to be 40 hours a week, okay? So we've got 35 extra hours and we've got 30 extra hours. What are we filling those extra hours with if it's not closings or writing purchase agreements? Like, it's a real, it's a, it's a real conversation to have, right? Because I know when I was an agent... I always felt like I was like working an 80 hour work week. And that was because I was the most inefficient person ever. And I truly thought it was work when I went out and had happy hour. I mean, I put that on the clock and it was definitely an expense. That's like no joke. And there's zero judgment in that. Right. But what are those other hours? Because I just looked at our numbers. Right. And I looked at numbers from other offices. There's like half offices that have 14 or less transactions, right? So that means that those other hours that we aren't lead genning are not filled with work. Like that's going to that's gonna move your business forward. Would we agree with that? So that's where the opportunity is. It's like, what are those hours? What, what are they filled with? And if I'm not going on an appointment, I hope that I'm refilling that time with more legion. Is that fair? Are we willing to do that? Yes. Are we scared to do that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What would make it less scary? Just doing it. <laughs> That's fair, right? Just doing it and getting over whatever fear you think is there. Bethany has her hand raised on Zoom. Yeah. Bethany, are you there, Bethany? Can you talk? Yes. Yeah, sorry, I was making sure I was an unmute. <laughs> um, a couple of just thoughts. Jake has shared this before. Kami, you've shared this before. Power happens in consistency, right? So what if everyone just committed to an actual hour of lead generation every day, just like Queen was talking about, I believe it was? 
And then find these moments that you can create intensity. And here's how we've done that is with our call nights and our prospecting days. And we set 15 appointments on our last call night. And it was a two hour time frame for our team. And the reality is like life does show up and you know, business needs to be handled here and there. So I know that if I don't, or even if our team isn't hitting the consistent numbers every day, we have those time blocks to fall back on to have a push for intensity. One of my favorite quotes is we often overcomplicate things to justify our inaction. And I think that with lead gen, a lot of times people are like, well, I don't know who to call today. So a way that we've simplified that is on Mondays, you call your hots. Those are the people that have at some point in time raised their hand and said they would potentially be moving in the next three months. Then on Tuesdays, you call your DTD2. And if you don't know what that is, we're happy to share it with you. But it's just a schedule of calling through your database. On Wednesdays, you find leads from Facebook and like, et cetera. I think creating like that gives you really no excuse to not know who to call. And it it causes just so much clarity to dive into lead generation time. I think all of those are really great points. And the other the other the other point is it doesn't always have to be called. Like add lead generation into your normal life, right? Your kids play a sport. Lead generate there just by making conversation, right? Like, hey, what is, what's new in your business? They're going to ask what's new in yours. Like make relationships. That's where I think sometimes we discount lead generation can be just in making the relationship and the conversation coming up. Sometimes I believe that you can shy away from that if you don't have the numbers or you don't think that you have the knowledge. You're not going to have the knowledge for everything that they ask. Like every single time I'd be like, that's a great question. I'd love to follow up with you. Maybe we could do coffee or I'll shoot you an email. How's that sound? Right? People don't care what you know. People don't, hey, people don't care what you know until they know that you care. So always make sure you, they know you care about them first. And nobody cares whether or not you know a statistic or a thing off the top of your head as long as you can go get it to them and you'll be accountable to get it later. So the only thing they care about is if they ask you a question and you say, oh, I'm not sure, I can get back to you with that later. All they care about is whether or not you actually get back to them. Like, and that, I think, if you think of, like, if you can think of any time you were talking to a professional or anyone when you were having that conversation, if you ask them a question and they didn't know, if they were very professionally courteous, like, oh, I'm actually going to double check on that just to be safe. I want to make sure I get you the right answer. I don't think anybody's offended by an answer like that, you know? So Other pieces, Legion is, I mean, Rick, your open house had 70 people through it. Even if 50 of them are represented. You had 20 people that you had contact with in that open house. Even if 65 of them were, you had five new people. Those were the five most important people because they already raised their hand that they want to buy a house. Like they're looking at houses right now, right? And we could so, also take advantage of that activity when we send out our just, we did, you know, our just sold yeah. your neighbor's house because you can add in there if you want, receive 25 offers. Yeah. Well, I'll, what neighbor is not going to pay attention to the fact that their neighbor's house that they saw go up? And then also, obviously, the sun, we did that Saturday and sold it Saturday. Sunday morning, the sold sign was up. You know, all these things are taking advantage of <clears throat> that community, that area, showing that you are a proficient real estate agent, sell those houses and multiple offers and get it done. And you know those neighbors see that sign. They do. They see that sold sign and they're yeah. just like, oh, wow. Did you see that? And then they get the postcard and they're yep. like, and then they talk to their back. Neighbor. Well, so I encourage us to say, hey, what, are, what are our tactics for lead gen, right? And it doesn't always have to be cold calls. Like it doesn't have to be. Like we say calls a lot because calls are important, but it can be other things too, right? And figure out what is the one that is most, you know, effective for you for now and long-term business. All right, next slide. Did it move? Nope. <laughs> nope. Okay. Wait, is it? Okay, so this slide, anyone shocked at this slide? No. I mean, inventory is low, but again, even when you look at this, it's not, I mean, it, it's low. It's, you know, lower than for a long time, but I'm like, it's not so drastically low as what we like 
I mean, sometimes it would feel like there was like no houses on the market, right? So part of it's like inventory is low and there are buyers out there. I mean, I think that's all we got to add on that one. Again, I think it's about perspective. And you actually have the numbers and perspective of what, you know, long-term that looks like. It looks different. Yeah. All right. These are nationwide numbers. These are nationwide. Yep. And you can pull the same. What I would do if you want, you know, you can pull these from InfoSparks in a very similar way. I've been looking as you go along. They all pretty much match up. The only one that really doesn't is that first slide, that national slide that shows the peak. Here in the Twin Cities, our number of home sales, our number of closed sales did actually get above. Get higher. The peak of 05. So, I mean, this is valid, right? Because now that conversation is, hey, we actually, we actually went percentage-wise a lot higher than nationwide, which is also something you can tell people is like, hey, when you're talking about home sales across the board, nationally it rose by whatever that percentage was, but locally, seven county metro, we actually rose by twice as much or whatever, whatever the comparison is. When you say things like that, that gives that gives context for someone like, oh, this is why it felt like the market was so in, you know intense. Okay. Next slide. Same thing. Um, I think inventory, we can kind of see um, when we look at that, there's not a lot of shifting across the months, actually. I mean, it goes up and it kind of almost stabilizes. There's some there's some dips, but it kind of stabilizes. We were pretty low though at the beginning. Interesting, it's come up so much in the late part of 2022. Yeah. Well, and it was almost opposite in the other years, right? So 20, it was like, whoop, right? Because of what happened. But then it was like a nice little bridge kind of inventory goes up June, July. Like there's not really a pattern in those three years of inventory uh, monthly. Yeah. All right, next slide. This was my favorite. Mortgage one of my rate. favorites. If there is one other slide, I mean, the one slide for you guys is obviously volume because it's something that you get paid on. But if this slide, like, there's so many things that I have to say about this, right? So when we're like, oh my gosh, interest rates went up, this is the end of the world. Are you flipping kidding me? Like, what? This is like an American Express, okay, on your homes. Which, by the way, nobody looks at their American Express, right, that has an 18 or 22% interest rate that they have credit card debt, right? It's a, it's a smaller amount, but, like, we aren't even close to where a healthy economic rate would be, right? Like, when we think of the housing market, you think of economics as a whole, right? Part of what we are blessed with here is that our economics are, are pretty stable, or at least, you know, they they... The government essentially controls them as much as we don't want to think that they do, right? When something goes haywire, why do you think interest rates drop? Like, it just wasn't a magic thing that happened, right? Like, money doesn't just start coming into your pocket with incentives because the government didn't make a decision that there were incentives. So when you look at this, there's reasons to try to stabilize out our economy. And it has been a really, really long time that we have been borrowing money for free, practically. Right. So there's there there are things that happen with that on the other side. So it equaling out now is not a. I feel like it's great, in my opinion. I think it's a great thing just across the board. And it also shows it's never been that low. It's never been that low. I mean, you, we will probably so never can, see it that low ever again, as we should not. Right. Like that. It was so low. That's a good one. Everyone always says, oh, the 80s, this and that, but to just see it, boom, there it is. There it is. <laughs> like, we have access to that somewhere. Yeah, all these slides will actually, they're on Connect, but we can send these out too. I mean, this slide is one where when people are like, oh, buyers are on the fence, interest rates. Yeah, affordability can change, right? Because interest rates can change the monthly payment if they choose that without buy downs. However, that's, that's not a, like, that's a you were at the top of what you were buying for because it was cheap money, which is also not necessarily a good thing. Can so I make a question about the numbers on the right hand side? Yes. So there's the historic average from 72 to 20. Is that the 7.8? And what's the number underneath that? It says one. I'm yeah, so that's, that's the like. 
Uh, that line is the historic average. So like if you see this one, right? So this one, it just goes this way. Historic yeah. average, this one is here. This is the average from 92. Yeah, but it says one. I don't know why that says one. I know, that's why, that's my like, I'm guessing there's a number that just isn't in there. If it's like 6.1, I'm guessing. Is that seven, like the? Maybe this was seven, eight, like 7.81, and this is five. This goes to here because this is part of this. These greens are the same. This is supposed to be 7.81. Right, so on the okay. slide, it just got shifted when we put it okay. in there. This is 5.97, right? And then gotcha. the other line is 5.34. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? Like those, that's those, what I needed. Thank that's you. what that's from. And then those are just the historic average from those time periods. On the normal slides, when they're not shoved into a, a slideshow, I'm guessing that would look different. Okay. Thank you. So we'll send the, the KW or the <laughs> international slides to you. Any other questions on this? Um, I can't show it on there, but I'm looking at like home price affordability, the home price affordability index, which basically takes price, mortgage rates, everything into account to see what's affordable. And right now it's about as affordable as it was in 2007. So, so it's I think like, that's the next, that's the next slide. It might be. Um, I'm just one step ahead <laughs> all day. Today. Is this so what Jacob is saying is really important to talk about people. Yeah, but like it's yeah. as it's just because it's not as incredibly crazy affordable as it's been for the past decade doesn't mean it still isn't good, you know. And that's not just mortgage rates, yep. but everything. Just people like to talk about, oh, prices are so high, but uh, like mortgage rates being so cheap really counteract that, like a lot, a lot. This is yeah. a great opportunity, like when I'm thinking about this, is you can write something about it in your social media, right? And people like might read it or not read it. Put this on as like a reel, right? And do your voice explaining what this means for the client, right? Because they're going to actually listen to that. Like explain to them so they can hear it. Do the same writing. You can write it out too, but like, do a voiceover on it and say, this is what this means for you. What are your thoughts? Get them into conversation and interact so that it's an option for you to be able to say, hey, here's my knowledge on it. Okay, next slide. I think the next few slides are affordability. Uh, we're going to go over that. We're gonna go over that. But that doesn't really matter. I mean, it does, but it does. Unemployment. Okay, here's the other thing. When we look at this, Right, because there's been things that have been across the media of all these layoffs and unemployment and how it's like shifting everything. What is what does this tell you? I mean, again, if you go all the way back to where like I mean it's low, it's still low. Lowest maybe the lowest it's ever been in that graph. It's competing. Yeah, and uh, mortgage delinquency rates are also crazy low too. No yep. one's getting houses foreclosed on. Yep. Nobody has going to foreclosure. So, but yeah, like, the like these are all things that you can use in the like kind of be like mythifying buyers right now and sellers, quite honestly. All right, next. Um, you can go next. And we're gonna go. <laughs> all right. So this though. Okay, you want to talk about what people should really be concerned about, right? It's not interest rate. Okay, so this is personal savings, like what the rate looks like for people. Okay, so what happened here, right? In right here, where everyone was like, oh, shit, I got to put money away, right? Because we don't know what's going to happen. And then they're sitting at home, Amazon was going on, and they're like, okay, now I have all this cash, what am I gonna do, right? Like, if there's a real thing to talk about, that's a real so conversation to have. They're saving 3.3% of their salary or of their money that they make. Yeah. Essentially. That's what they Yeah. 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 Oh, that chart goes. Like that's like a that chart goes back for fifty years. That you know what? You know what? The other part of this is though. This is a great conversation of like, hey, guess what? People don't necessarily want to save money, right? So, what's your retirement plan? They're like, oh gosh, I don't know. Great, let's talk about real estate, right? Because we might not get to these slides in this meeting because I want to be conscious of time. But real estate is about the safest investment over time. Over time that you can actually invest in, right? Is there a comment in the chat? 
So, I mean, this right here, and Gary literally went off. He went off, okay? Like, he was in weird tilt on, on this thing, and he's like, but all I see is these millennials sitting there having a $25 cocktail, and there's nothing in the bank account. And I'm like, it's true. You guys, it's true. Like, that is so true. How many of us have went out to dinner and you're like, I didn't put anything in my savings account, but I had the most amazing whiskey cocktail I've had in a long time. Cool. Mm -hmm. That just, you know, did something for you for like four hours. Right. And that's very realistic right now. So instead of then worrying about all of the other things, interest rates, your savings, anyone's savings should be number one. And if they're not saving, hey, let's do a wealth building class. Oh, what's the topic? Real estate. You want to save money? Maybe that's your class. Let's talk about savings. Oh, okay, great. We're gonna to come to it. Awesome. We're gonna do we're gonna do real estate topic. Jacob. On the savings thing, uh, one thing that goes great with this conversation is reminding people, hey, if you bought a house in the past two years, you probably have a crazy low interest rate. You know what kind of homes are great to rent? Ones that have crazy low interest rates on their mortgage. That can be an extremely profitable mm -hmm. venture when you have a four, three and a half, three percent mortgage. Like your cash flow is way better than any rate you could get now. So why would you sell, like, even if you're buying a new house and your new house's rate is going to be five and a half, six percent, you have this one that's literally by the numbers, probably a much better rental. Even if it's not a good rental house, those, like that mortgage rate just makes it so much easier. If I, when we move, I want to keep my house, not because it's a great rental, but because, yeah, no, I'm not going to be able to beat the numbers if I get a new mortgage. It just won't make sense. So like, when this, like, it, to this point, like, when this slide came up, there was, like, a gasp in the room. Everyone was like, <gasps> right? So isn't that the reaction that you want from people to start conversation? Like, just looking at that, people are like, what is that? It's insane. All right, next slide. Okay, so a little bit about inflation, right? Um, I actually, I like this one. I also like the other, the other slides. Maybe go. So let's talk about it this way, right? Because this is this is easier for people to conceptualize instead of then like just putting out a number there. So what what does this look like to you? We, we were talking about it. So if you're a person that might have some sort of sickness or your parents are ill, and you have kids that are in college, right? Um, and maybe you have another kid that still has childcare, you're screwed, yeah. legit screwed. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you make, you are SOL, unless you have an inheritance from someone, especially if you're only putting 3.3% down. Great. And carrying some credit card debt. And, and I mean, too. let's just add that up. But hey, we could buy a ton of TVs. Uh -huh. But I mean, this is where you, this is where you gotta like. Also, this is a this is an option of pre planning when you're talking about hey, if we're not saving, like these two slides alone could get a wealth building class or a savings class or investing in real estate class. Like alone would be like, hey, where are you at on this, right? Like, because affordability here and inflation, housing is like right in the middle, and people are still buying new cars. But like this other stuff is crazy. <sighs> like when we talk about being like the, the local economist or just the economist in general, know these numbers, right? Watch these slides. And this, as I see some of the commercial guys, this is commercial residential everything. Because as much as we don't want to talk sometimes commercial and residential, like working, they're they are actually hand in hand. When one thing happens with the commercial, it's the same thing with residential and vice versa. Well, my first house, my interest rate, I mean, it was at 13.5%. Yeah, we were just, we just had that slide up a, a few, a few I mean, slides. So ago. it's all kind of relative. I mean, yeah. look what it is now, you know, for a single family home. Super relative. I mean, this is another <laughs> thing. <laughs> Have you refinanced? No, I own it now. Yeah. Jim's like, have you thought about it? No. <laughs> Keeping it up. All right, next slide. Didn't move? Nope. <laughs> You're doing great, though, Heather. I appreciate you. I'll try hard. Uh, okay, this one's a fun one. 
right? Because it kind of goes back to what we feel like we're paying and what we're not. What do you guys see here? I mean, this this is interesting to me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when you look at all of these numbers and then you're like, oh, but the interest rate's insane. And then this is insane. Yeah. I mean, since 89 to 2022, really? Like that puts that puts it a little bit in perspective of what that changes versus what gas is. I see a ton of people driving around brand new Teslas and BMWs. And they don't seem to have an issue with that. And like they are as much as some of the houses people are living in, right? So when we think of that uptick, when some of these cars are incredibly expensive, they're still buying them. It's not unusual to have a thousand dollar a month car payment on a brand on a newer car now these days. Up and up against a thousand dollars. And then let's just look at this. So. What industry are we in that doesn't actually have an hourly rate, right? I guarantee, here going back to our conversation of I'm going to go get a job, right? Okay, awesome. So the mortgage, real uh, estate, entrepreneur, right, right, is more than this. If housing, like, let's just put this in perspective, right? If the house prices have went up, we get paid on prices, right? Our hourly rate has increased by a heck of a lot more than 14%. Would you guys agree with that? So when we're saying, hey, I just don't want to do the lead gen or I don't want to build my business because I'm going to go get a job. Cool. Let's let's look at this and then let's look at the affordability graph and talk about where you land in that. Right? Like it's hard work, but do the work and you it, in the end, you're going to be ahead on every single level. Like we we are really lucky to be in the industry that we're in especially right now. Do you guys agree with that? Mortgage being up 2.81, they're just it, that's just about the monthly payment number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, next slide. Okay. Okay, so this yes, this did change. <laughs> like that actually changed, Amy. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, this is just from 2000 to 2022, right? So this is actually a very short time period. If you remember, this was a lot lower, right? This actually isn't that much difference. It was three percent. This one is a, is a lot smaller because that already had kind of upticked, right? Just depending on when that, that price point changed. And this one is, is similar, right? So when you look at that, it's all about perspective. And numbers can change a story very quickly. So when you're using these, just make sure how you're using them, right? Because to people right now, they're like, yeah, this is, no, everything's changed. Well, that's because they never experienced housing before 2000, right? Like over time, again, over time, real estate changes, but however, it can be incredibly lucrative. Okay, next slide. All right, so this is just size per agent. Um, this is one where, again, I think it's, it's talking about, you know, we need to capitalize, obviously, on the volume piece. We should not focus on the volume piece though, in regards to long-term business, because as you can see, it's gonna be lower than it has been in a long time with sides per agent, right? So if we're taking less sides, what do you think that's gonna do year over year over year over year? Gary mm -hmm. said it, you lose market share in this market, you're not gonna get it back. And if you get it back, it's not gonna be easy. If you take market share, you're not going to give it up unless you choose to give it up, right? And you choose to stop working. Because how many of us, like, when we're rolling, it's like, you know what, I just I don't want to do this. I don't want to make this much money. Usually nobody. Usually. <laughs> Would you guys agree with that? So now do you guys know why I've been, like, kind of just, like, 
smashing it every single time, like a broken record. Hey, what are our units at? What are our units at? What are our units at? Because those are going to shift. Jacob. In the last two months, 54,000 agents dropped out, according to NAR reports. In 2022, there were 1,580,000 agents. February's report was 1,525,000. So 55,000 agents in two months gone. It's you want to know why? Because they went to go get a job. Yeah. That has only <laughs> had a difference of 14% in wages over the last a lot of years. All right, next slide. No. You guys, if you have to leave, it is after 12. Um, totally get it. All right, so volume per agent. Where are we at? Not as high. It's not as high, but it's still high. I mean, when you look at units versus volume, we're still making money. I mean, it might be, yeah. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> in 22 years. And this is where the market share conversation comes in. As people keep dropping out, you know, and they had their like five friends that they helped in like the last five years, go take those five friends. There's 50,000 groups of five friends. They're in around. fact, go find an agent that just got out of the business to go get a job and be like, hey, can I have your database? Granted, they're going to be like, I don't even know what that means. But Either way, be the referral partner. There's opportunity. I mean, how many agents right now are you're like, oh, I don't know. I think I'm going to get out of the business. Awesome. I am so excited for you. Let me just be your referral partner. Right? All right. Next slide. Well, I mean, this is kind of what we already talked about. New listings are still low. Kind of the, the whole scheme of that is getting getting new listings, getting more listings. We can keep moving. Talking about just you know defaulting on loans, delinquencies, it's not it's not like shooting up like some people are thinking it, it's going to. Um, as of right now, we're still pretty low compared to you know the times that we we thought that could be happening. Compared to uh, 2007, 2008, if things were not good and something was going to happen, we'd start to see that by now. Like that'd be yep. showing up for sure. Because even a lot of these are like not foreclosed, not quite foreclosures yet, but there's a lot of data that's out there for like people who are a little bit behind, but not quite being foreclosed on. Those are still down too. Nobody, like it's not happening. We're good. <laughs> We've lost our jobs. Yeah. I think it also has to do with the equity that it won't have enough. Yes, for sure. If they are in a tight. Yep. Yep. Okay, next slide. Ooh, this one's exciting. Guys, you guys like, I mean, this is a, this is a real topic of why we don't have as many homes, right? Like there are only so many homes that are out there currently unless we have new home starts. Right. And for how long? Since what, 2009? It has been incredibly low on new home starts. Why is that? Acquisition was high. We went through different things with lumber, all these other things. Like, there was a lot of things that played factors in that. Yeah. Just a lot. Like if that prices came up enough to justify building more houses, everything else happened. And we had this whole conversation where we're like, some houses are just sitting, yeah. right? That are new builds. Okay, why was that? Look at the new home starts in 2021. All the numbers tell the stories that you're you're feeling, right? So you can just look at this and be like, okay, what's the next year going to look like? The funny thing, this is why we do like business plans and stuff, right? Because like numbers don't lie. Anyone else want to laugh at that? Because I think it's great. <laughs> yeah. I, I also think the Zers are back there and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's great. Yeah. The builders are doing. All the land, they can pull the inventory. I build more because my price is high. I'm just thinking about the mm -hmm. that's what you're talking about. For the builders, I've been through this kind of the market. The, to go now, if it's, if it's a small subdivision or you know, 
build for a client or build spec, everything costs more money. So their margins get squeezed. Costs less you can add on to the purchase price, which is difficult to do because the cost of capital for the buyer is higher than spent for a long time. Cost of the land is more money, the cost of the materials is more money. The availability of the materials is hard to get. So everything just moves up. And so then you have these the affordability factor is what's slowing down the cycle of sales. Big over affordability. Yeah, yeah, we just did that one. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yes, and then we talked about like medical and all the other things that are not affordable <laughs> with inflation. <laughs> all right, next slide. Yeah. Student loan debt, right? Um, so student loans in trillions is the bottom part. Uh, obviously, all other consumer debt is on the top. What do you guys get from this slide? Because I mean, what you hear is student loan debt, student loan debt, student loan debt. What do you What do you get from this slide? Bunch of other debt. There is a bunch of other debt, right? I'm not going to get whatever, but this debt's not forgiven. This top one, ever. This will not be forgiven. Right, this is, this is, that's not gonna happen. But we focus a lot on the student loan portion of it. And we actually talked about this, when that goes down and if it's forgiven, what that looks like for affordability for that, that group of people. And it, it changes dramatically. We all guessed we're gonna keep those comments for ourselves. <laughs> Shane's like- think we're all gonna pay for it? Uh, essentially, yes, yeah, correct. right? And to that point, though, goes back to like the government is the one that controls, right? What what the finances look like, whether or not it's forgiving loans, that's going to get distributed somewhere, right? And this is where you have to learn economics, be able to have like very in depth conversations on those topics, no matter what you feel or don't feel. Actually, having the knowledge base to speak on it, right? Levels of that will continue, but what also continues is the the price of education goes up, continues to go up every year. I toured the University of San Diego with my daughter. It had its own, well, that was a very high price school. It had its own gourmet restaurant on campus for when the parents would come to visit. It was 75000 a year. Mm -hmm. That's how much it cost. So now we're getting a deal with somewhere else for fifty five. <laughs> well, I mean, I think we could go down a whole rabbit hole with that, right? Like, I mean, the dorms that back in the day, you had nothing. It was like you wore flip flops in the shower and now you have private bathrooms. Like, yeah. you can go down a rabbit hole with that. Um, needless to say, I mean, that's obviously been going up, which which causes first time homebuyer situations to change. Next slide. Okay, rent versus own. This is a big one. This is a big topic. I don't know why those numbers don't, I don't know what those numbers look like in normal. But um, this is a great slide. And again, we're sending out the actual KW International slides. These are kind of put into a, a presentation, so they kind of got messed up. Um, but if someone is thinking, do we know, do we, can you just pull up the normal slides so we have these numbers? Because I don't remember what, that, what those numbers are. Okay. How do you read it? It's just weird from a display. It's just, yeah, it's just weird from the display. Uh, I mean, the whole point of this, though, is over time, again, owning real estate has the, has the highest return, right? No matter if you rent, you rent and you invest, um, it's going to have the highest return. And, and part of that is, as we're talking, everyone's like, oh, the interest rate's really high. What are you paying as an interest rate when you rent? Yeah. 100%, right? And, and I get that some people are unable to purchase, right? Part of our job is to help them become able to purchase, get them in the right programs, get them educated to know that they can purchase because there's no higher interest rate than renting, zero. Right? So I show a lot of renters and sometimes they rent through townhomes. They're like, well, do I have to pay the HOA? And I almost all the time, I want to say, well, you're already paying it through renting, but I don't say that. I said, no, the owner pays that. Well, I think it's, I think it's you, you, like a, a mindset different, right? Like, this is just what I do. I mean, to be fair, when I was 18 and I went to college, I never thought about buying a house. I didn't even know that that was an option, right? Like, I truly didn't. Who knew that that was an option when you were 18? 
Christy. Yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't, like my mom was like for closing on houses at that point in time. So I didn't like, I had no financial like idea of what owning a house actually was. Right. Uh, but to that point, right. You just are like, I just rent. That's what I'm supposed to do. You're supposed to rent a house. And then one day maybe I'll buy. If there's one thing, like one group of people, right? Um, a lot of people are like, oh, the, you know, my my kids aren't aren't old enough to do that. Educating the 13 to 18 year olds what it looks like to own a home. Like my oldest daughter, she won't spend anything in her savings because she wants to buy a house. She's actually here. Punch me if I was hanging. Because she's like, I'm gonna buy a house and I'm gonna rent it to all my friends. It's college. I was like, yes, you are. <laughs> right? Like that that's what she wants to do. I didn't I never had that opportunity. And we have that opportunity to tell, even if we don't have children, you have clients that have children to be like, hey, guess what? You already have a buyer in them. Put a smart plan together to teach these kids how to actually save, right? This is a cute story to what you just are talking about. Uh, my daughter's just turned 18. And uh, we'll just we'll we'll, uh, we'll send this slide out. Sorry, we'll send this slide out. But yeah, this is a good you. one to explain too. And she was at the dinner table with us, and she's getting ready to go to uh, college. And she just got a job at Panera Bread like eight months ago or something. Looks at my wife oh. as serious as she could be. What's it cost to live like this, this lifestyle that we're living? And I just looked at her and I said, a lot more than what you're making at Panera Bread. <laughs> and, you know, to, to teach her, put it in perspective. And also putting in perspective, maybe not. If she starts saving now until time frame, maybe not, right? Like it all depends on, on your on your thought process of that, right? Like, I mean, if I would have started saving when I was a certain age, it's very different than when I started saving at 23, you know? Um, I had a cup of coffee last week with a gentleman who owns his own business. He's owned it for three years. And he was telling me that he's getting engaged and he wanted to meet with me to talk about buying real estate in the next five years, but he knows there's no way he can buy now. And I said, well, tell, tell me why you can't buy now. Like, it's okay if you don't, I'm okay with that, but I just want to know why you can't. And he had this long list and I said, that's really interesting. And then I started debunking like everything. He said, do you know that you don't need 20% down to buy a house? He says, really? He says, he says, well, I, I own a new business. Like, you only have to be in business for more than two years. And even if it was less, we could find another way to finance. And it was so funny because by the end of our conversation, he's like, what was that mortgage person's name again? Because <laughs> they don't know. You don't know what you don't know. And I think sometimes we assume. assume. Yeah, it's like we assume smart. that. So I think that education is huge and this record is only we have a whole population of people between the ages of 20 and 30 who think that there's no way for them to buy. And my favorite line right now is, well, you're always paying down a mortgage. It's more fun if it's yours. And, and to be fair, their parents most likely have not taught them that they can own a home, right? Like that's not their job in parenting. Like no one's like, hey, part of it. It's like, keep your kid alive, send him to college. <laughs> Give him a good one. Like, you know what I mean? Like, as a parent, that's kind of like no one's teaching them that. Heather literally taught me, hey, Heather. if you're in my house working a job or at school and you're saving up money to buy a house, just do that. Do that and you'll be fine. And then I bought a house in this store too. It literally, eat for I'm me. like, don't give me one dime. Yeah, like, exactly. If you're, if you're wasting it and you're not and I just saving put, it for I a house. I literally put everything in savings and then got a house with 4% interest rate. Yeah. Do yourself. Like yeah, I would, and I also said, if you choose to go out and rent and not, I know, if you're going to rent and where you could live in this house rent free and save for your down payment, I will be furious. I mean, I mean it was like, <laughs> this is not going to happen. You can live free here and you save for your, I didn't have any rules. I'm like, this is a pretty easy one house. Yeah. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to wrap this up. We'll probably talk about this in the next few meetings. Um, but I really hope that this meeting, as much as some of the numbers are not like, ooh, super exciting and there's decreases, that it gave you hope and like drive for the opportunity that's out there. 
I mean, there were multiple things that were brought up from everybody on where we as real estate professionals can educate people. There can be different lead generation sources. I'm like, it actually, just even talking about like the younger generation learning how to own a home is a huge opportunity for us too. Uh, for anyone who knows any teenagers interested like this, send them to Quantum Leap. Send them to Quantum Leap. Gary Keller teaches it every year. It's designed for people aged like 15 to 24. It's the best 18. thing. 18, 18 to 24. Send them to that. I, please, I cannot emphasize that enough. It was the most valuable thing for me to hear when I was 18. I sent like, both of, yeah, I've sent all my kids to Quantum Leap. Yeah, you can either, they, there's an in-person thing in Austin or you can do it online as well. It's Phenomenal. And they totally even set it up for the younger kids at the hotel yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah. It's a very organized. Very helpful. Yeah. 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 I put two properties in that with whole Google shared thing we're doing today. We should yeah. put stuff in there. Yes. 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 And, and that's the thing. Yeah. That's yeah. now completely live. Right. So you can go into the Google document. So when you're like, hey, it wasn't sent out or I didn't see it on Tuesday. Go make go put that into your drive because you can see it as it gets updated in there. What new withholds are coming, um, when they're coming on, price points, you can see that every single day of the week, okay? So it'll be sent out again today. And also you are able to put your listings in there, just FYI. Okay. And send your wants and needs to Lydia. All right, thanks for staying. Sorry we went over, but I think it was important. Thank you. Next one. Thank you.